It's Adam 12. We are backstage at Boston Calling with Churches. Uh, we're presented by Xfinity. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves, please. Hey, I'm Martin. I'm Lauren. And I'm Ian. Okay, I want to get the geek out stuff out of the way first off, because when we had you guys in session a couple of years ago, um, I didn't get to uh, interview you guys. But uh, Martin, I was a huge fan of the Twilight Sad. Oh, cool. Oh, that's really cool. Absolutely. And Ian, uh, Sleep and Release from Aerogram is an all-time favorite of mine. So. That's that's awesome of you to say that, man. Nice. I mean, it was just uh, like the the uh, it was it was Sleep and Release, which came out was that 03? And then what was the one? One of them was in 01, one was in 03. But the, 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 those two albums, I'm, 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 clearly I'm not a big enough fan because I'm like, I'm, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've boned on the name of the other one. But anyway, big fan of your old band. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, so, um, but no, we're, we're here to talk about the new album. Uh, the new album, just Every Open Eye. Just, this is actually kind of cool because this doesn't often happen. The album came out yesterday. And here we are sitting down with you guys talking to you today. So... What does it feel like to finally see all the work that went into it, all the time, all the planning? The album is finally out there. It came out yesterday. How are you feeling about that? Feels good. Feels really good, actually. Yeah, we're we're all very relaxed, which is unusual. You know. <laughs> so there's not a lot of anxiety. It's a, that's all in the rear view now. It's like okay, finally it's out. There's almost breathing that sigh of relief. Right. Well, you, well, you know, I don't think we were particularly anxious about the quality of the record, but we, you, you do kind of think about the reception and I think when we, we actually put a stream up last week and we had just an overwhelming reaction from listeners and since then we've been just trying to get into tour mode and have a good time. Same feeling Lauren? Yeah I think so I guess it's weird because we've been living with the record for so long we started making it in January but um, we've known what the finished thing was for ages so it's nice now for it to finally be real and we can focus on touring and playing the shows and stuff that we're more familiar with than tons and tons and tons of album set up stuff right, right. so so this is the same kind of feeling yeah i mean the, the good thing about this now is that we have a bunch more songs that we can play live and uh, we're just really really looking forward to to letting people hear the new songs and properly road testing them all it's good too it's been good to kind of see obviously you've been you know playing some of those new songs live it's it's been it's been good to see that happening um uh you wrote and produced the album yourselves so you know kind of piggybacking onto the last question is there more of a feeling of accountability where this is all this is all the three of you this is all your work there's not like you know a team of producers or mixers or anything like that i mean it, does it make it does it make the reception more personal and that works both ways when people are talking about how much they love it do you feel more elated that way and then when you people who talk about maybe picking apart and don't like it as much it's almost a little bit more personal because it's not like you can say well you know this producer worked on it we can kind of you know put it off on them yeah there's nowhere to hide with that stuff and we that's how we want it you know we want complete ownership of everything that we do all aspects of the the creative you know the stuff that we can control i mean we we use video people and and visual artists that that kind of inspired us or help uh, to help us but when it comes to the studio it's it's all us you know i much prefer it that way it um is there a, is there a, a bit of um uh perfectionism i mean it's because it's a different when there's it almost seems that when there's there's a smaller team and not a bigger team that's more of of an idea of we we really need to make sure that we get this right do you find that streak in your band i think that we're quite strict with ourselves we have quite a high quality filter um but i like that though i don't you obviously don't want to get like completely wrapped up in that and not able to write anything but i think it's important to for us to feel that like we've made the best thing we can make and you know the positive aspects of that are all ours so i think yeah it's good to have that yeah. control. i think yeah i mean we definitely have a pretty um pretty high sort of bar of like quality control because really, w with like music and live music particularly, there's a lot of kind of chaotic elements. But what you can control is your studio output. You have a complete control over that, um, and so that's yeah, it's really important to us. But also, it's also important important to us to not overdo it, to not over polish it, um, because there's a there's an element of spontaneity that we like to keep in the in the writing process and in the recording process. So hopefully, we, we kept that right. And you also don't want to create something that you can't reproduce live. I mean, you can. I'm sure you could all on your own think of examples of artists that you've listened to the record and been like, "This is phenomenal." And then you see the live performance. Oh, they did. They they went too far. They did too much in the studio, and now they can't. You know, recreate that product live. Which you know, seeing you guys live in the past, you don't seem to have that problem. You seem to be able to to take what you've done in the studio and to really make it come to life and breathe life into it when you when you get out on stage. Well, I guess that's just uh, coming from an indie background. You know, we're not 
born of uh, modern sort of EDM attitude to to live performance. That's not to say that we don't really appreciate a good light show. You know, that's like a big part of what we do. But that's been a part of rock and roll since as long as I can remember. You know, and we want to put on a show, but at, at its core, it has to be a band performing. You know, I want people to be looking at us and watching the band as opposed to looking at a big screen behind us and going well aren't all those lights really pretty and that's all they take <laughs> away from it you know the, and you get uh, it's so many people who kind of fall down at that point these days because they just get really attracted to going as putting as much on the screen as you can and then, i don't know i guess they're overcompensating but we try not to no. you do you do a good job of keeping the focus on yourselves um i'll ask you this now that the album is out uh, and you've you've kind of you know, I'm sure it's a different mindset. Uh, it's a different set of um, you know behaviors and routines when you're working on an album throughout that process. What's something that now that it's out and you've got that that done, something that you can do now? I'll ask each of you. Something you can do now that you weren't able to do while you were you know in that process. Is it whether it's something you know mundane that you have to set aside, or, or and, and that you can now come back to, or if it's just a different a, a change in your mindset or something along those lines. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There, there's nothing specific that comes to mind, but certainly it's a completely different rhythm and mindset from the studio. I think we are probably a lot more attuned to studio life, and, and that we actually get to, you know, to go to our local Indian restaurant, yeah. which is like something that we're very passionate about. Okay, very good. Coming from Glasgow, you know, it's one of our greatest exports, ironically. Absolutely, it is. So, how about you? Is it the same for you, Lauren? Is is it is there a change in behavior once the kind of the 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 studio routine comes to a close? Yeah, I guess uh, touring is emotionally strenuous in some ways, but um, when we're writing, we try and put a lot of ourselves into it and we want it to feel like it's coming from a genuine and authentic place emotionally. So uh, it can be quite hard going to be digging that up all the time. So I'm kind of glad now to be in the tour mode. And, you know, every so often I'm like, I'm tired. And that's about like the peak of my uh, emotional range when I'm on tour. So I think that's good. I'm fine with that. And you get to go to the pub now more often, which is nice. No, well, you know, um, no, I went to the pub anyway. <laughs> right uh, the uh, actually, I didn't. When we were making this record, I was pretty straight living the whole time. But the um, with me, it's more now I can listen to music again. Because when before we make a record, all I do is listen to music and criticize and enjoy and and and. I try to understand every aspect of what I listen to and then is build all of that stuff up in my brain and when it comes to make a record I don't listen to any any other music at all ever and I'm just completely focused on us and then when that's over I can go back to doing what I did there before which is listen to everyone else's music and get inspired you know will you listen to new what, so so now that you can listen again will you listen to new material from from bands that you like or will you go back to old favorites as almost like a like a comfort uh, zone I li no, no, I listen to as much new music as possible, European new music for the most part, like electronic music or American rap music or, you know, I, as well as music from the 60s, 70s, 80s, anything. It's, it's about personality and character and something and the uniqueness when it, for me when it comes to listening to other people's records. You know, it's, there has to be some sort of edge to it, and if there's that, I can get I can get that from listening to a Taylor Swift record or listening to some German electronic music. You know, it's, it, as long as it has something about it. If you want a good American uh, rap, rap album that came out this year, the new Czar Face album, which oh, is, yeah. is very good, so check that out. Oh, cool, yeah. I'll, I'll give you the details after we wrap up the interview. I want to ask one more question before we wrap up. I want to pick on you, Lauren, um, because... Don't, don't <laughs> Uh, say again she, this is a terrible idea she's going to eat you right. listen I've seen and heard plenty of what Lauren has to say and I know this already I'm complimenting Lauren because oh, I'm yeah, I'm yeah. because I'm a I'm a father of a seven-year-old girl I have a son as well but my daughter is seven years old and I wanted to thank you because you were doing an excellent job of being a fantastic role model uh, to young ladies and and uh, ladies of all ages really because you are bravely uh, taking on the subject of uh, bullying on the internet, 
Uh, you talk frankly about the way people uh, respond uh, to who you are, uh, your image, uh, what you do, and you you step up and you and you you address it and you talk about it. And there aren't enough artists that do that. So thank you. And I wanted to, and I know that you've spoken a lot in the media about uh, you know you know the, the way that you handle trolls and that you you know you have to do what you have to do. But what I wanted to ask you, Lauren, is I know you're hearing plenty from the trolls. We're all reading the the stories about that. Are you hearing from other artists? Are you hearing from other young ladies? Uh, is your message getting out there and are people hearing it? I think so. We've always had really great feedback from people we've met in other bands and people that come to the show, young guys and young girls, to speak to us about it. And it's always great when we meet people and they talk about the fact that that stuff's resonating with them, whether they're in music or not. And yeah, I think it's nice to see the ethos of their band reflected by the fan community and vice versa and it just feels like we should conduct ourselves in a way that feels right to us and that's what we're trying to do well, it's a very it's and again it's something that a lot of people i think they choose to they choose to ignore it or which is which is one way to deal with it and that's fine but the fact that you used to that you choose to accept it head on uh I th and i and i give the credit to all of you guys because obviously you're 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 a, you're a team and you're a family you support each other but it's a very authentic way to go about things and i think it's a positive message so thank you for sending that message that's very nice this is Churches. We're backstage at Boston Calling, uh, powered by Xfinity. I'm Adam Twelve from Radio BDC. Thanks again, guys.